Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, I showed you how to install Fedora Server 31 on VirtualBox. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Nextcloud on it. So let's see how it's done. So I'm gonna pull up VirtualBox here. And as we did last time, at the login prompt, we see the IP address of our machine. So I'm gonna open up my browser where I put already this IP in and I can see the server web interface. So because I have to install a lot of packages now, I'm going to log in as root, as I don't want to type sudo the whole time. So I'm just going to type in here root and put in my password. And there you go. Now I'm going to go to the terminal. And now the first thing I want to do is to actually check for update. So I'm just going to type in dnf update. And I do have some updates here, so I'm just going to install them before I start the installation of Nextcloud. So I'm going to type in yes and hit enter. It's going to take a moment here to download. I'll be back when it's done. So installation is done. I have some important new packages installed right now, so I need to reboot the machine one time. So I'll just type in reboot. And I go back to VirtualBox here and I see my machine being rebooted. And you see I have a new kernel, so I'll just hit the first line. And there you go. So now I can actually go back to my browser here and click on reconnect. And re-enter my login credentials. So root and the password. And there you go. Now I'm ready to start the installation. So before we install Nextcloud on Fedora server, we need to install what's called a LAMP the Linux, Apache, MySQL database, and PHP. Those are packages needed in order to install Nextcloud. So let's install first Apache, our web server. And we are going to do this by typing in dnf install httpd and hit enter. Now I'm going to accept the packages, so I'm going to type in yes and hit enter again. And it's going to take one moment to download. And there you go. That was pretty fast. So I'm clean up the terminal with Control L. So the next thing we need to do is actually to start the web server and also enable it so that it's going to be automatically started the next time I boot up the machine. So first, let's start the web server by typing in system CTL start HTTPD and hit enter. And then to enable the service, let's type in system CTL enable HTTPD and hit enter. So there you go. The next step with the web server is actually to allow some ports through the firewall. We want to actually open HTTP and the HTTPS ports. So let's type in these commands firewall dash cmd space dash dash add dash service equal http space dash dash permanent and hit enter we need to also open the https port so i'm just going to pull up the previous command by tapping the up arrow and i'm going to add here the s after the p and hit enter now we need to reload the firewall, so we'll just type in firewall dash cmd space dash dash reload and hit enter. Now if we navigate to our IP here, which is 192.168.178.52, we'll see we have the web server up and running, which is perfect. So I'm going to close up this tab here. And that was the installation for the A in the LAMP. So the Apache server is now installed. So let's go now to the M, which is the MySQL, the database server. So we'll install this by typing in dnf install mariadb dash server. Hit enter. So there's some packages here. So I'm just going to type in Y and hit enter again. And it's going to take a moment to download and install, so I'll be back when it's done. 
So the package is installed, so I'm just going to clean up the terminal again by hitting Ctrl L. And the next step would be to start the server and also to enable it as we did for the web server. So let's type in system CTL start Maria DB and hit enter. And now we have to enable it, so let's type in system CTL enable Maria DB and hit enter again. There you go. The next step with the database would be to secure it. So we'll type in mysql underscore secure underscore installation and hit enter. So it asks for the current password for the root for the database service, which I don't have any, so I'll just hit enter for none. I want to set the root password, so I'll type in yes, and now I set in a new password. Hit enter and re-enter again. Remove anonymous users, yes, and hit enter. Disallow root login remotely, I'll type in yes and hit enter. Remove the test database, yes, and hit enter again. And reload privilege tables now, yes, and enter again. And this is done. Now, as we did for the Apache server, we also need here to open some ports for the database server. So let's type in firewall dash cmd space dash dash add dash service equal mysql space dash dash permanent and hit enter. And now we need to reload the firewall, so we'll just type in firewall dash cmd space dash dash reload. And there you go. I clean up the terminal with control L. And now we go to the P of our LAMP installation, which is PHP. So let's type in dnf install php php dash mb string php dash peer there are going to be more php packages to install but we'll do that when we install nextcloud now i'll hit enter and type in y and accept the packages and it's done so we installed Apache, we installed the database server, and we installed PHP. I'm just going to reboot one time more the machine so that we have the packages in place. Again, I'm going to go back to my virtual box here and hit enter on the first line. And we are back to the login prompt. So I'm going to go back to my browser and click reconnect. And again, I log in as root. So now we need to install these PHP packages. Make sure you write them correctly, pause the video if you need to, and when you're ready, you can just hit enter. So I'll hit Y to accept the changes. It's gonna take a moment to download here, so I'm gonna be back when it's done. And that was pretty fast. So the next step would be actually to download Nextcloud. So I want to do that by changing first my directory. So I'm going to go to the temp directory by typing in cd slash tmp and hit enter. And here I want to download Nextcloud. So I'm going to just type in wget space https download dot nextcloud dot com slash server slash releases slash latest dot zip and then hit enter and nextcloud is downloaded to the directory so i'm going to list the directory here by typing in ls as you see i have the latest dot zip file which i need now to unzip so i'm going to clean up the terminal and the next step would be to extract the file so i'm just going to type in unzip and latest dot zip and hit enter. 
And I'm going to clean up the terminal again and move up to the next step, which would be to give ownership of Nextcloud to the Apache user. So let's do this by typing in change ownership, chown, dash capital R for the cursive, Apache, double colon, Apache, space, Nextcloud. And hit enter. Now we need to move what we just extracted to the HTML directory on our server. So let's do this by typing in mv nextcloud space slash var slash www slash html and hit enter. And there you go. So clean up the terminal now. The next step in the process is to configure the virtual host. So we have to create a new file and type in some lines here. So I'll just type in nano slash etsy slash httpd slash conf dot d slash nextcloud dot conf and hit enter. And we'll write in here these lines. Now, make sure you get them correctly if you need to pause the video, of course. Just one thing to be careful is if you choose to install Nextcloud on another directory, you'll just have to replace what I have here under HTML slash Nextcloud. So once you've done that, you hit Control O and hit Enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. And then the next step would be to create the database and the user for the database. So we'll do this by typing in my SQL dash u root dash p and hit enter. Put in the root password and now we are ready to create a database. So I'm going to create a database by typing in create database and I'm going to call the database nextcloud to keep it simple and end this with the semicolon and hit enter. Next, we'll create a user for the database. So we'll type in create user, single quotes, hermano in my case, this is the name of my user, and single quote at, open again, single quote, localhost, single quote again, space identified by, single quote, and the password. So for this test, I'm just going to choose a very simple one. Let's do one, two, three, four, five. And single quote again. And semicolon at the end. And then hit enter. Now we need to grant all permissions to this user. So we'll do this by typing in grant all privileges on the Nextcloud database. So on Nextcloud dot asterisk now we grant it to again single quote my username in this case emano and single quote at single quote localhost single quote identified by single quote and the password one two three four five in my case single quote semicolon and hit enter now let's flush the privileges. So let's type in flush privileges, semicolon, hit enter. And the last thing, well, let's exit the program by typing in exit and hit enter. Now clean up the terminal here. And the next step, it's a small change to the SE Linux file. So we'll need to do this by typing in nano slash Etsy slash SE Linux slash config and we'll go down to this line when it says sc linux equal enforcing and we'll change this to permissive now control o and enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now i need to reboot the machine so i'll just type in reboot I'll go back shortly here to my virtual box and hit enter on the first line. So now we open up a new tab in the browser and we can actually navigate to the Nextcloud installation directly to finish it up. So let's pull up a new tab here. I'll type in 
5.2 slash nextcloud. And as you can see, Nextcloud is correctly installed. Now we need to create an admin account. So in this case, I'll just put in my name and my password. Now there is a warning here that we are using SQLite as a database, which is okay. However, as Nextcloud recommends here for production, we recommend a different database backend. So let's do this by clicking here on the storage and database arrow. And as you can see, we are using now SQLite. What I want to use is MariaDB. So I'm just going to click here. And now I need to fill up the info we did before. So the database user was my name, the password was the super secret password, one, two, three, four, five. And the database name was Nextcloud. Localhost is fine. Now I can click finish setup. It's gonna take a moment here for Nextcloud to finish the installation. So I'll be back when it's done. And there you go. We are now in Nextcloud. We are greeted by the boot screen here. So I'll just scroll through and start using Nextcloud. And that's it for the Nextcloud installation. So in the next video, I'm going to cover how to install SSL and eventually later in another video, how to actually access this installation from outside our local network. Well, for now, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like this video by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. And again, if there's anything specific you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.